So this little video is on um, prokaryotic structure, partly in response to um, it was very poorly tackled in the test, and I think it's just because perhaps you you know spend so much time on organelles, um, perhaps you've kind of overlooked the prokaryote aspect. Um, prokaryotes are bacterial cells, and they are cells, so they're not akaryotic, like, uh, like viruses, which means that they've got a cell membrane running right the way around the outside of the cell. Now I've deliberately done this cell membrane with a little infolding, and that infolding is called a mesosome. And we need to know its function, and it does carries out the function of respiration. So this is the one involved in energy release, and again we'll come back to that in a bit. <coughs> Around the outside of the cell, just like in plant cells, we have a cell wall. It pretty much does the same job, it's kind of strong and you know, gives a bit of structural support, a bit of shaping. Um, and the key thing that we need to know about the cell wall is that it's made of, and you can call it one of two things to you, peptidoglycan, that's my personal favourite, um, and murane. So you can call it one or the other. So, what's so different about prokaryotic cells? When we did cell types in, the, uh, in an earlier video, we said that the key difference was that the DNA was in this area called the nucleoid, and it's circular, and it's naked, which isn't as rude as it sounds. So, we've got circular, naked DNA in a nucleoid region. Now that what nucleoid region means is that it is floating free in the cytoplasm. It's not in a nuclear membrane. Not within a nuclear membrane. So pretty much in general, we don't have a proper nucleus, and um, we haven't got any sort of membranous organelles, and that's it's partly a size thing, I think. I mean, bacteria are around about the same size as a mitochondria, obviously quite variable in size, but you're probably talking sort of. A, Two to ten nan um, micrometers, then tiny, much much tinier than cells. You get a lot of bacterial cells into uh, one plant cell, for example. Um, naked, I think, probably deserves a little bit of explanation. That means it's not associated with histones. So when we did chromatin, we said that it was. Uh, the DNA and protein, and the proteins are called histones. So instead of being the DNA being strung out like sort of you know the string between beads of protein, um, a naked DNA is not like that. Um, I really only to need to do two more labels. Really, the only other thing that you'll find inside of a, a prokaryotic cell are ribosomes. Now, again, they'll be floating free in the cytoplasm. There's no endoplasmic reticulum to attach them to. So these are free, and they're 70S ribosomes. Now, that, all that means, we don't need to worry about what 70S means. It just means they're smaller than those in eukaryotic cells. All eukaryotic cells have 80S ribosomes, which are a little bit bigger. Prokaryotes, mitochondria, chloroplasts all have 70S ribosomes and of course they're going to do protein synthesis. Now, 
Those features apply to every single bacterium. Every single one has all of those features. A cell membrane, a cell wall, a mesosome to do respiration, may also have a bit of an involvement in DNA replication, some circular DNA that contains all the genes for making another bacterium just the same as this one, and some free 70S ribosomes. We have some sort of, you know, it's a bit like a car, that's your basic model. But then you've got all sorts of add-ons that may or may not be present. You know, so for example, one car might have a sunroof, uh, and air conditioning, and another car might just have a sunroof or just have air conditioning. So they can have any number of these additional features. Um, they tend to be protective features, so I saw quite a lot of people, so I'm going to draw my, all my additional features in orange. So I saw quite a lot of people referring to the uh, slime capsule. Now this is, uh, again, it's a protective thing. It's going to slow down any desiccation going on. It's going to do a bit of protection from the immune system of, of animals. You might have small extra bits of DNA. So these are small circles of DNA. And they've got the kind of optional extra genes on. So not the genes used to make another copy of the bacterium, but extra features like uh, antibiotic resistance would be a good one and quite topical at the moment. And those features are plasmids. So again, not all bacteria have them. Now, some might have a slime capsule and plasmids, some might just have plasmid. We've also got um, flagella. Uh, jolly handy if you're going to be a bacteria that moves around. Again, not all have them. Some might have a slime capsule and a flagellum or some plasmids in a flagellum or just a flagellum. And the other one are uh, features called pili. And they help bacteria have sex. I'm just whispering that. So, uh, pili are used in gene transfer between, uh, so they're a bit like hollow straws really. They might also form the site of an um, attachment of bacteria um, to cells. So, they can be quite useful. And again, you know, you might have all of these or just a few of them. So, they're the main sort of features. So, what do we need to be able to do? We need to be able to compare. Uh, bacteria to acaryotes, viruses, we need to be able to compare bacteria to plant cells or to animal cells, to any eukaryotic cell. <coughs> so obviously viruses are just literally um, a, a protein coat surrounding a nucleic acid. That nucleic acid is either DNA or RNA. Obviously bacteria have both because they've got their circular DNA whether or not they've got plasmids, and of course their ribosomes are made of RNA, so they've got both sorts, just like we have. So they've got, you know, a code for the protein and a mechanism for making the protein. Um, they have a cell membrane, which acaryotes don't, because these are cellular and they, acaryotes are not cellular. When we come to compare them to eukaryotic cells, so here we're talking plant, animal cells, fungal cells, uh, later on in the course you'll be doing about Protoctista, which are also eukaryotic. And eukaryotes are, their sort of key defining feature is that they have a membrane-bound nucleus. So they've got membrane-bound nucleus, nuclear pores, chromatin, whole kit and caboodle. Um, they don't always have cell walls. When they do have cell walls, they tend to be made of cellulose or chitin, but they're definitely not made of peptidoglycan because that is purely a prokaryotic feature. And they have in their cytoplasm ATS ribosomes. Now obviously we know that in mitochondria and chloroplasts those ribosomes are 70S, so they're both sorts, uh, but in the cytoplasm just ATS ribosomes and some of those may be attached to membranes. 
So a eukaryotic cells also have all those membrane bound organelles. They have endoplasmic reticulum, they have Golgi body, they have lysosomes. So all of those things, mitochondria and chloroplasts, um, not forgetting of course the membrane bound nucleus. So that's sort of a, a key difference. If we're looking at a comparison of say a bacterial cell, a prokaryotic cell with a mitochondria, so in eukaryotic cells we've got mitochondria to do our respiration for us and the bacteria do it themselves but they've got this infolded membrane to do it on the mesosome and that's fairly similar to the cristae of mitochondria. Cristae of mitochondria is just infolding of a membrane so you know they're, they're fairly similar features um, and again you might have to, if you're given some information, need to comment on that. Uh, so I think that kind of wraps it up. Oh, so we should we do some similarities? So similar things between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Obviously the cell membrane surrounding the cell. They've got cytoplasm, which I didn't label. Um, perhaps I should have done. I'll label it now. So, you know, all the rest of it, full of cytoplasm, just like eukaryotes. Cyto, can't spell, plasm. Uh, and they've got ribosomes. So, as long as you don't mention the size, you can say they've both got ribosomes. They've both got protein synthesis making equipment. And, of course, they've both got DNA, although bacteria, circular, naked. And in eukaryotes, that's linear associated with histone proteins and forms chromosomes. Um, I think that's kind of it. That's what I can tell you about bacteria. That's all I know.